the coolest cars we saw at the 2022 Woodward Dream Cruise. The annual moving car show held on Detroit's Woodward Avenue brought out an amazing array of vehicles, from classic Corvettes to modern Lamborghinis. While the ultra-wealthy are mingling on the manicured green of the Pebble Beach golf links for the Concours d'Elegance that wraps up Monterey Car Week, sipping champagne and admiring gleaming pre-war beauties, another huge car show is happening 2,500 miles away with an entirely different vibe. The Woodward Dream Cruise sees thousands of enthusiasts descend on one of Detroit's main strips, Woodward Avenue, to show off their rides. Spectators set up lawn chairs to watch the parade roll past, sipping beers and chowing down on barbecue as the drivers rev their engines and occasionally engage in burnouts when they think the cops stationed along the boulevard aren't looking. A diverse array of vehicles shows up, from classic muscle cars to modern exotics and modified trucks, and everything in between. Here's a selection of some of the coolest vehicles we spotted at the 2022 Woodward Dream Cruise. Chevy Corvettes were one of the most popular models at Dream Cruise, and this second-generation vet was especially pretty. The pointy front end, bulging fenders, white wall tires, and copper paint job had us drooling. Ford relaunched the GT nameplate in 2017 after it returned to the 24 Hours of Le Mans in 2016 and won its class 50 years after sweeping the podium with the GT40. The new GT is basically a race car for the road, with its twin-turbo V6 pushing out either 647 or 660 horsepower depending on the year and aerodynamic tunnels carved through the wedge-shaped body. Lots of old muscle cars were present at the Dream Cruise, and this 1970 Dodge Challenger RT looked especially fetching with its plum-crazy purple paint. The 1970 RT was offered with a variety of large displacement V8s and a standard three-speed manual transmission. While American muscle dominates the show, gems from all over the globe show up, like this Honda N600. The first Honda to be officially exported to the United States, the N600 arrived in 1970 with a tiny two-cylinder engine and a four-speed manual, and about 25,000 reached American shores before it was replaced by the first-generation Civic in 1972. The Bricklin SV1 was a fiberglass sports car built in Canada between 1974 and 1975 that sported dramatic gullwing doors and a large V8. A three-speed automatic or a four-speed manual were available. Production ended with just under 3,000 built, making it a treat to see one out and about. While police were posted on nearly every block scanning the procession for hooliganism like burnouts and drag racing, we also spied a couple of old-school cop cars participating in the parade, like this 1959 Ford. While modern Michigan State police cars lack the 1959's flashy tail fins and toothy chrome grille, the single red gumball siren atop the roof is still in use. There was some cool newer metal at the Dream Cruise, like this Ford Bronco Raptor in eruption green. In our test, the Bronco Raptor was an off-road beast, thanks to its 418 horsepower twin turbo 3.0 liter V6, 37-inch tires, and dedicated all-terrain suspension. This sleek black Ferrari 488 Pista with red racing stripes let us take a peek at its twin turbocharged 3.9 liter V8 through its glass engine cover. A combination of 711 horsepower and 567 pound-feet of torque propelled the Pista to 60 miles per hour in 2.7 seconds in car and driver testing and on to a claimed 211 mile per hour top speed. Many of the Dream Cruise participants arrive in low-slung sports cars, but we were enamored with this immaculate Volkswagen Type 2, also known as the Microbus. This example sports a classic red and white two-tone look, and the passenger appropriately flashed a peace sign as they drove past. There were Dodge Vipers galore at Dream Cruise, but we were especially attracted to the sleek, unmodified look of this red fifth-generation model. We wish Dodge would bring its V10-powered beast back, but the muscle car maker has instead turned its attention to electric propulsion. The Willys Jeepster is the furthest the Jeep name has strayed from the SUV body style. With power from an inline-4 or inline-6 sent exclusively to the rear wheels through a three-speed manual, Willys proclaimed that this two-door convertible was a sports car and marketing material but the Jeepster perplexed the buying public and production fizzled out in 1950 after three years with less than 20,000 units built. This 1971 Plymouth Barracuda, a cousin to the Challenger, pops in lime light green, with the black hemi graphic on the rear fender suggesting that this Cuda is powered by the 7.0-liter V8, which produced a healthy 425 horsepower. Porsche just revealed the latest 911 GT3 RS, but this 991 generation GT3 RS stood out at Dream Cruise with its bold green paint job and towering rear wing. The unpainted carbon fiber hood indicates that this RS was fitted with the Visoc package, which made the already featherweight track special even lighter. 
The Pontiac Ken M arrived in 1977 as a performance variant of the Le Mans featuring a 6.6-liter V8 with 200 horsepower, a 20-pony upgrade. It also added the shaker hood scoop from the Trans Am and some sweet orange stripes, but the the mold used to make the fiberglass rear spoiler broke and Pontiac cancelled the model after just six months, with a little over 1,000 Canams made. Big sedans deserve big engines, so we have always been partial to the Mercedes-Benz S65 AMG. This example comes from the W220 generation, and its 6.0-liter V12 makes 604 horsepower and a mind-blowing 738 pound-feet of torque. When new, this S65 cost nearly $200,000. This third-generation Mazda RX-7 set itself apart in the Dream Cruise crowd with its 1.3-liter rotary engine and our eyes were glued to its slinky bodywork with minimal modifications. While Mazda did produce a successor, the RX-8, until 2012, it hasn't sold a car with a rotary engine stateside since. This 1960 Cadillac may not feature the soaring tail fins that made the 1959 model so famous, but its styling is still quite decadent by modern standards. While the fins were more restrained in 1960, we wouldn't call them small, and plenty of gleaming chrome adorns this slab-sided caddy. With 480 horsepower from its 5.0-liter V8, the Ford Mustang Mach 1 makes a thunderous noise. It can also reach 60 miles per hour in the low 4-second range, and while it offers a 10-speed automatic, we much prefer the Tremec 6-speed manual gearbox. At last year's lightning lap competition, the BMW M5 CS circled the Virginia International Raceway in a blistering 2 minutes 50.3 seconds, making the most of the 627 horsepower and 553 pound-feet of torque churning out of its twin turbo 4.4-liter V8. The lighter, track-focused CS also looks fantastic in frozen deep green metallic with gold wheels. With its upright chrome grille and straight character lines running the length of the bodywork, this Mercedes-Benz 280 say oozed class as it cruised down Woodward. The 280 Say was built between 1967 and 1972, and while most were powered by a 2.8-liter inline 6, the badging on this example indicates its 4.5-liter V8 powertrain that was only offered in 1971 and 1972. The Ferrari 348 may have lost to a pickup truck in a drag race during a 1991 car and driver comparison test, but the mid-engine V8 sports car was still a special sight among the Mustangs and Corvettes that dominated Dream Cruise. This dazzling red 348 Spider looked to be in pristine condition. The Jaguar XFRS was the British automaker's attempt to challenge the BMW M5 and Mercedes E63 AMG in the early 2010s, and while XFRS couldn't keep up with the Germans dynamically, the brutish 550 horsepower 5.0 liter V8 and handsome styling made it an appealing left field choice. This clean black Saab 900 reminded us just how much we miss the quirky Swedish automaker. The 900 underwent many updates during its nearly two-decade production run, but the inset headlights indicate that this well-preserved example was built before 1987. We also love the look of those turbine-style wheels. The ZR1 was the highest-performance version of the sixth-generation Corvette. Its LS9 supercharged 6.2-liter V8 pumped out 638 ponies and 604 pound-feet of torque and was visible through a transparent panel in its carbon fiber hood. Cadillac's current V8-powered sports sedan, the CT5 V Blackwing, is undeniably fantastic, but we wish it were still offered with a wagon variant. Built from 2011 to 2014, the second-generation CTS V featured a 556-horsepower supercharged 6.2-liter V8 and an optional six-speed manual, and it looked especially sharp in long roof form. This Buick GSX, the Tri-Shield brand's muscle car entry in the early 1970s, looked resplendent in Saturn yellow. The GSX was based on the Grand Sport, itself a derivative of the Skylark, and its 455 cubic inch V8 produced 350 horsepower and 510 pound-feet of torque. The original DeLorean was not especially quick with its 130 horsepower V6 and didn't provide a particularly athletic driving experience. But legendary designer Gerghetto Gidro most certainly made it look cool with its low, wide stance, gullwing doors, and brushed stainless steel body panels. While the Honda Prelude of the mid-1990s is the most famous, the nameplate first originated in 1978 on a two-door 2 plus 2 that borrowed the brakes, engine, and suspension components from the Accord. Power came from small inline 4, and it was offered with a 5-speed manual, with this example looking like it just left the showroom floor. Lamborghini is known for theatrical designs, and the Murcielago truly fits that bill. The high-speed wedge, 
powered by a 6.2-liter V12, featured retractable air intakes above the rear wheels and scissor doors. With 572 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque, a 2003 Murcielago hit 60 mph in just 3.8 seconds in car and driver testing.